It's been quite a wait. It's been seven months of racing, but those five red lights are about to indicate that the European Le Mans Series finale for 2024 is green, is go, and already a jump to the midfield there for the yellow-fronted into Europol competition car number 43. But it's a good getaway from Manuel Maldonado, side by side in behind, and that means that Lorenzo Fluxa loses a spot. LMGT3s get through turn one for the first time of asking. A bit of give and take, and that is necessary in such a long race with some awkward corners, natural pinch point in one, two, and three, and four. The cars are moving around on the road, but now there's going to be a lead change, and we barely had a sector. Is there around the outside? We'll go Gabby Obrey. And now there's a spin oh. and a big hit for the 34 into Europe Hot Competition car. There might have been a brush there from the number eight. LMP3 car on some GT traffic. Quite a lot of mixing up because of those pit stops early on from LMP3, and as you say, the baby prototypes. This is the number 50 car, Formula Racing car, and that was a bit of a brush with, uh, I think that's probably a couple of dive planes missing from the 59 Aston Martin. Race winning, and that's a second incident involving the 59, and the 59 going round as well. That was another hit and another Aston Martin by the 50 car. Johnny Larson. Yeah, because we've all done the permutations to think that was a really late move, but an excellent one from Nico Pino. Not the first time it we've seen that. Now to the high side. The 37 car of Lorenzo Fluxer puts a GT3 car in between it and the 65. The LM GT3 car just sort of folded its arms in and said, yeah, you crack on, and a place change as a result. Side by side between the 9 and the 30, Duquesne and our race leaders at Mugello. Alexander Bukantsov, in fact, gets ahead of Jacques Wolf, so tumbling down to ninth spot. Jonas Reed on the inside of Ryan Cullen in the white and black Vector Sport car. And this is the fight for 10th and 9th. And Reed gets the place, so up into the top nine. Carl Bennett will be the next car on his list, although having said that, shouldn't call the overtake quite before it's completed, but now he is through. Debris from the back of the 59 car. That was almost like the rear exploded. So they put have they put a new rear screen in that car? It's the 22. And is, that was the Panis Racing car. In LMP2 Pro-Am, as John Fowle went down the inside of Georgios Kolobos, it's been a recovery drive for John Fowle. Johnny Edgar's on the defensive mode because trying to squeeze through is the 43 of Sebastian Alvarez. Done a shove out of the way there from the LMP2 Virage car to the number 12, which is second in LMP2. So Torsten Kratz... So Mike Wainwright's 86 Ferrari has clashed with the 28, the former race leader, and Pino descending down the charts. We were about to give you the current standings, the current order, but uh, that's going to be very, very stale now. We are going virtual safety car at 15.37.30. At 15.37.30, we're going virtual safety car. I think that was an outlet for you, Eric. Ah, cold tires. That's exactly what it was. Okay, that, that would explain it. 20 seconds to virtual safety car. Car, 21 car, certainly being in the wars at certain times when Daniel Schneider was driving it. Tucked in behind is Ritoma Miyata. Miyata actually timed as being ahead of Pedersen across the line. Oh, he is ahead, that's why. And a big whack of the kerb there by the AO by TF Sport car, which is going around the outside now, trying to net third position away from Pedersen. Still not quite done it at turn four. That's Robert Kabitza aboard the 14 car now. We've got a fair number of the quicker drivers, and that was almost side-to-side -side contact as up the inside there. It's Arthur Leclerc in the number 65 car. Gets up into third place, some potentially exciting stuff to come from Arthur, by the way. Media reports that he will be testing a Ferrari hypercar at the rookie test in Bahrain. That's turn three. It did look pretty tight through there. Two and three wide between a number of cars. 
And a slight lock-up from the 34 car, which barrels its way down the hill. That's the Inter-Europol of Clement Novelak. As we're watching that confirmation that car nine I would have last time out on Link's Proton will be getting a drive through penalty for track limits. 66 car has, I think, managed to rejoin. So Lawson, Hamaguchi, Berry all overlapping one another. Now Sarah Bovey is catching. Or was there a was there a tag or was that a lose entirely on his own for Scott Noble? Those two battling away from the start of the race for the lead in LMP3, but now battling for what is that third place because your international lead the race. It's not just the, the weight of the hit, it's where you hit it and what angle you hit it at that often is the, the problem. Uh, in and out of the pits, by the way, the grid motorsport by TF car and Johnny Adam is now aboard the 97 car, rejoins in eighth place, but a lot of work to do. JMW Motorsport 66 Ferrari is also on pit lane. Robert Kubica having a very enjoyable stint to this point. He's in third position. Now Jean-Baptiste Simonau getting the elbows out again as he fights with Frederick Vesti. Vesti getting a slightly better run. And who's this arriving on the scene? It's Alex Lynn in the APR car. So these are all on the same lap, all for position. Oh, getting in the side there. Alex Lynn currently running 6th, 7th and 8th as the car streamed by what had been second place for Arthur Leclerc. Victoria Miata carries on around for another lap. That's a change, I think. Ooh, oh, no, but then not. wasn't. <laughs> That's uh, Arthur Leclerc getting on to terms with Fred Vesti. Now, down the inside will go Manuel Espirito Santo on Bernardo Pinheiro, who appears to have no answer to the pace of the cool racing car. But Luca Giotto is catching Delatraz in the 34 into Europol car. Ferdi Habsburg for the seven seconds back and going quickly. Tom Dillman, quick as well. This is going to be a group that compresses and compresses quickly. LMP2 Pro-Am, Alex Quinn leads. Varga Pro Racing from Benfis Carl for Proton. Nielsen Racing's Nick Yellily is in third. But uh, these guys are, have been around the block a few times now. Now there's the five car in the way. Oh, and they're more of a touch. And the, the 29 wants the middle of the road. So they're still getting into one another. Phenomenal car control there, particularly from Mathieu Vaxivier. You can see again this incident. It was the, up the inside of the Aston Martin for Ollie Jarvis. We, we didn't see that early enough. No, no, I agree. Down the inside. Well, I don't think I'd have put my Orica there. Further behind, nose to tail between the Inter-Europol competition cars. Will the 43 be allowed to head by here? It was just yes. a draft, Dillman, actually. But that might well have been a decision by the team as well. Tom Dillman, I think, is going to be a man to watch here. He's got pace. He's coming on the back of as another positional change there. The Panis Racing car. Baker's up the inside again, and is it going to be two positional changes? It is in two corners for the 65 car. Sean Malacy is on a tear as well. Not quite got it done though yet on Giotto. Giotto to the inside line at turn seven. Oh, there's a, a touch. Squirm. Flashing the lights, and now Giotto says, oh, Get out of it, Milesi. This was what we saw just a half a lap or two ago between those two cars. That battle was won on track by Luca Giotto. Side to side contact, not between those oh, two no. cars again. It it's was 29 and 83. That was a very close maneuver. So he's dropped right back. That's put them out of this. Sean Malesi drops, what is that, five places on the restart. Yamalta Jakobsen, 2.3 seconds ahead of Louis Delatraz. He's now trying to pull back some of those lost positions, getting onto terms here with the number 10 car. Ooh, oh! Now there's contact with the Vector Sport car, and there's a problem now massively this... because everything's condensing, and that, that was the DKR car involved as well. Now a good run from the Wockenspiegel team, Monchard Duquesne, on the eight of Julien Henrion for Team Virage. 
Picking up some debris on the way through. But that is... Well, actually, Oscar Tunio, yes, timed ahead. And that was right at turn one. So, Gael Julien now running fourth, but ahead of Julien Omrion and catching the number 11 car of Adam Ali. Matthias Besch goes ahead of the Algar Pro car of Alex Quinn, but that gap, 17,000 to a second, and here comes three title contenders together there as well, and that's uh, that's the, the eight car oh. off the track after contact from the 88, and that might well be done for Team Virage. Side by side here, Gel Julian on the attack. And he makes that, makes that run. Now his next target is the championship leader. Was that it's the a change. Getting it's ahead a change. Of it was. That's a change. And that uh, would determine fate of the LMP2 Pro Am. <laughs> so Mathieu Vaxavier has maybe benefited from an error from Matthias Besch. And there is Gel Julian up the inside. This could be it here and now. He's done. He's done, got the move done cleanly. Beautifully done, and he's in amongst the LMP2 Pro Ams. AO by TF having a late stop again. We would have expected that, so it's not a huge concern. I think everybody else is likely to come in. What about APR? Have they pulled off an absolute blinder here? Has he been in fuel save? That's the reaction from Cool Racing now at turn 13, heading through Sagresh. And a win for Cool Racing and Malta Jakobsen for this one-off event. Everyone in the Cool Racing garage has shot off. Lamborghini up the inside. The Lamborghini's taken the lead. Incredible. It's going to be Lamborghini to take the win and the title with a pass in the final corner. Absolutely astonishing. And he knew all about where the race leader was. Surely be able to lock that in. Andrea Caldarelli spotted the opportunity and wins the LMGT3 category, scoring seven more points than the Iron Dames. What an amazing end to this season. Well, well, well. Now, Bent Viscal ended up winning the LMVP2 Pro-Am division. So what did that do to Algarve Pro Racing's opportunity? Was second place enough? I'm not sure it was. AF Corsa finished fourth with 12 points, 98 points for AF Corsa. Yeah. Um, Algo Pro Racing finished 96. second with 18. It's It's gone to AF Corsa. Cool Racing take the victory after 127 laps from AO by TF, our champions in 2024. Cool Racing, two cars on the podium ahead of the two into Europol competition cars, fourth and fifth. A late change in LMP2 Pro-Am sees the 77 car for Proton Competition and Bent Viscal jump ahead of Algarve Pro Racing, denying the 20 crew a title instead. That goes to the 13th placed finisher, number 83, that finished fourth in class, AF Corsa. And then further down the order in LMP3, it was a victory again for Cool Racing. A great day for those guys. Two cars in it on the LMP2 podium, a win in LMP3 and a championship in the Michelin Le Mans Cup. And in LMGT3, it's a win for the 63 Andrea Caldarelli driven car. A, a, literally a last corner manoeuvre to put Axel Jeffries and Hiroshi Hamaguchi into the championship lead just as the overall leader was overtaking them to immediately cement those positions. Remember that the strength in depth which is heading to this championship, uh, some will have to be turned away. You cannot wait for it. We certainly can't. See you next April. Bye-bye for now.